Well, hey there, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Adam. Thanks for hanging out with me again today. And on today's video, we're going to unveil the buggy that I got from Keith over at RC Icons. Um, so if you haven't watched any of Keith's videos recently, you know, do yourself a favor. Go down in the description once you're done with this video. Click on the link to his videos. Um, he has a ridiculous collection and has had some really, really, really good luck lately of finding some extremely good deals on um, multiple platforms, but mainly by e. Recently, he bought a car that he didn't need at all, but he couldn't pass up the deal on the car and reached out to me to see if I was interested in buying it from him for what he had into it. Um, he essentially bought it to pass it on to someone uh, eventually, whether it was gonna be a giveaway or just sell to somebody, one of his friends. So thankfully, he reached out to me and I jumped on that opportunity. <laughs> so I'm not going to tell you the exact price, but it is well, well, well less than what most of these things are selling for on platforms like eBay and especially Marketplace. Um, but it is in really, really good shape. It has a few little quirks, but I don't think it's ever actually been run. So without any further ado, we have an all original Madcap. Well, mostly all original. There's a couple caveats to that. So this buggy is just in terrific shape. Not a scratch on the bottom, you know, not a scuff on the bumper. You know, everything looks brand new from, you know, years and years and years ago. The body's all original. Uh, the wing, however, this is not the factory wing. And to be honest with you, this looks like a cutoff of another body. <laughs> um, and I think that some somewhere, somehow, the wing got destroyed and they just made it do. So, more than likely, eventually, definitely, this is going to get a new body set from Team Blue Groove and some MCI decals to recreate it. Total box art with the wing. Um, because it kind of, it's, it's missing the, you know, never give up cool wing on the back of it um the body itself is you know original it's you know hand painted with looks like a two inch house brush and zero cares <laughs> i mean they did a good job they masked off the back back here and painted the red on and then the rest of it man they they gobbed some some paint on there i'll get it up close to that but you know this is way back when before the rattle cans were really popular and re really easy to get. And, you know, the the, the paint on uh, polycarbonate paint was generally what you used, but man, they they used it. Um, so originally, like right off the bat, I could tell that the wing was not quite right. And it's held on by some, you know, hardware store hardware. Uh, so that needs to get replaced. Now, luckily I dug around and I found the underwing mount from spare parts out of an old kit and so we'll be able to pop that off and you know replace it once i get a an actual madcap wing now some of the other things um going on with it like i said the the buggy is in great 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 shape um they had the radio tray mounted on backwards um so i actually had to flip that around to ensure that you know this was all copacetic because the problem was the servo wasn't going down all the way um but now let me see if I can snake it in. Yeah, so now the servo for the mechanical speed controller actually sets all the way down. Now, the front servo is not in here as well, and um, when it took it out of the box, there had a little package taped to the top of the body here that had one single servo mount in it. And I'm like, why? So I pulled the body off. The other servo mount's mounted into the chassis. So I was like, why is that one just stuck up here, but whatever. Um, so I'll take a, a close picture, but this is the servo mount and um, it's kind of a, um, a split clamshell design now. So obviously either when they were taking the electronics that they had in here out or at some point, you know, this plastic just snapped in half and is no longer a usable mount. So again, dug through the spares, found a pair of body mounts that will work. They're not exactly like the originals. They're about uh, maybe two millimeters shorter. But I checked, they're basically flush with the bottom of the servo, so the servo, everything will sit in here nicely. The servo saver is still attached, um, so we still have that. 
Um, one other thing, well, it didn't have the mechanical speed control, so thankfully I had a spare mechanical speed control, so this should work as long as the wiring is long enough to go, the resistor wiring is long enough to go. Um, but it was missing the resistor mount and the antenna mount. So the resistor mount goes somewhere in here, like such. Uh, fronts. So the speed control mount sits in there like that. And luckily these are common in other kits. So I was able to snag one of those out from another kit. Although it does look like the holes don't match up quite perfectly. So, you know, this will work. Um, I'm gonna have to drill another hole in the bottom to get it to match up with the screw hole. But this will allow the plate to mount like so. Then the arm goes back and forth. Now I don't have the Z-Bend arm for it. So I may just have to make one out of some all thread and two ball cups, put ball studs on them so that'll work. Um, the motor wire had popped off so I need to re-solder the motor wire back on. But pretty much everything I, I've got you know, pretty much everything to make it work. Um, this one, it, like I said, is not the exact perfect one for this car. So what I may do is since I don't have the Z-Bend arm for this, I may just snap off one of those pins and be able to shift it over just enough to catch the hole. Not 100% sure, but we're gonna make this one work regardless. Um, you know, don't throw away your extras. Um, you know, this came out of a parts bin, this came out of a parts bin, this came out of a parts bin. Um, this was something I purchased for another build, but didn't use. So, you know, just on the safe side, don't throw anything away. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get to working on this. So right now, all I'm doing is installing the servo and the mechanical speed control. Um, I'm not sure what radio system I'm putting in here. So right now we're just kind of mocking it up. I'll get the servo centered best I can. And, you know, just to keep the front end from flapping around and, you know, to all we gotta do is put in a, a receiver. Right now I don't have any of my normal 2.4 gig receivers. And I don't know, I've got the CPR unit, um, but I don't know if I, I, I kind of want to keep the mechanical speed control in here because that's what it would have came with. You know, at this time they were electronic speed controls out there, but they weren't common because, you know, they were very expensive back then. So I'm probably going to keep the mechanical in here and then we will, you know, figure out what receiver I want to put in here. More than likely, I'm probably just going to put in a, you know, um, 2.4 gig receiver in here just because they're cheap and easy to get. And I really don't have another vintage radio set for this. So We'll see, but unfortunately I'm not gonna get it all wrapped up today. We're just gonna get the radio gear in, you know, the wing and the body is gonna have to wait. I gotta make another order from Team Blue Groove and MCI, which I just made an order through Team Blue Groove and MCI. So that's probably gonna be a minute, but we'll get it to where it's, you know, presentable at this point. So I'll be right back once I get everything cleaned up because there is some dust and dirt and stuff on here. So I'm gonna try to get everything cleaned up, get the radio gear in here, and then I'll be back for a closing. So I do wanna mention, you know, Thankfully, there were places like Tamiya Base, um, RC Scrapyard, other places out there um, that have resources out there for stuff like this. I don't have a manual for this. It didn't come with one, and I've never actually worked on one of these. So being able to go to something like TamiyaBase.com to be able to go in and just download the manual, put it on my computer, come down here, and be able to you know zoom in and check out things and look for the parts in the manual in my little parts bin because I would have had no idea what that antenna mount looks like. Um, unfortunately, I don't have one, but, you know, that's kind of the least of my worries right now. The 2.4 gig system, you know, I can just let the radio, the antenna lay around here. And at this point, I'm not even 100% sure I'm going to drive it. Like I said, it is in pristine shape. So this thing has been sitting around so long, it actually has corrosion on some of the screws. So, you know, I'll get up close pictures of that, but we're gonna try to clean off all that, get rid of whatever that was. You know, it kind of looked like salty air type corrosion. So maybe somebody lives by the seaside and um, just had enough 
uh, salt water in the air occasionally to affect it. But overall, everything is looks in really, really good shape. Thank you so much, Keith, for, you know, reaching out and saying, hey, do you want this? Um, yeah. Well, sadly, it's not much further along than it was. <laughs> so, ran into some issues. So, one thing is the mechanical speed control I got evidently is for one of the small scale, like, MO5 buggies or some, or MO5 on-road cars or something. Um, one, the resistor wires are very short, uh, so those wouldn't reach. That I could solve. I could just solder, unsolder these, solder new wires on, hook it up. Um, I'd have to find the chunkier terminal ends um, or just reuse this resistor. So the biggest problem is a single hole mount MSC. And I ran into the same issue. I bought this originally for the retro build of the Tamiya lunchbox. So if you're interested in that, link's down in the description below. But I ran into the same issue with that. I need a two hole uh, mount, so hole here, hole here. And this just is not gonna work right. So I said, hey, the manual shows, you know, mechanical, or mechanical and electric speed control in there. Let me get that ad spec controller and the <clears throat> CPR unit and uh, see if that'll go in there. And it would be a very tight fit. So you kind of have to mount it up top because the only way to mount it down here is long ways. It doesn't fit in between the chassis sides, but it also won't fit between the back of the servo and the battery slot. So you'd kind of have to stand it up on an end and, you know, we could have made it work. Uh, more than likely it would have run it up on the top deck, run it long ways, um, but it needed no worky. So I got this for free in a car lot purchase, and um, the radio is a little bit glitchy. You know, if you, so right now it's on, but if you squeeze the battery compartment the wrong way, you know, it lights blink on and off. Um, so not a whole lot of trust in this, but figured, okay, we can get it for a quick run. Just be very gentle how I um, hold it and, you know, clean up the, the terminals the best I can. Um, this doesn't seem to turn on, um, but I'm not sure because it came with a 27.95 crystal and a 26.975 crystal. So the receiver had 27.095 and the transmitter had 26.975. Uh, they don't talky to each other. Never even thought to look, but this is on channel one, this is on channel six. So uh, that's not gonna work. So we gotta scrap that idea. So at this point, um, I've got the rear servo in for the mechanical speed control. I've got the front servo in for the steering, but unfortunately, it's, it's no connected. So the uh, servo saver had the ACOMS and Sanwa connector, and I need the Fataba, the 25 teeth. And uh, yeah, I don't have any. I've looked in all my spare parts bins and my new parts, and evidently I have used up all the servo savers that I had, so I have none that fits that servo. Now, I could have put, you know, a solid servo horn on there and just run, you know, solid steering, but that's not right, so I'm not going to. <laughs> um, I did cut down the food container rear wing here, so I took about a half inch off of length, so we, it was, you know, mounted there, I cut all that off and slid the wing forward. Um, I took about a quarter inch off the top of it, um, total, and then I took another quarter inch kind of cut out of the rear just to make it not look like a food container so much. Um, it works for now, but the, you know, drop down side original wing will go on there once I get the new body of decals. Um, so, sorry, not a spectacular video. Um, I tried, you know, I tried different things. Now I could go and, you know, stick a Poppy Wing 1060 in here and all that stuff, but again, I'm not terribly eager to go run this and get it scuffed up and scratched up. And, you know, it's a vintage buggy. Everything on here is original-ish, except for that. And, um, you know, I'd like to keep it that way. So I would like to get the mechanical, the proper mechanical speed control in. Um, the only thing I don't have, and I thought it was the antenna mount, 
but it's actually the cover for the mechanical speed control. So the mechanical speed control sits in, there's a front post, it's a little bit taller than the mount, and it allows you to bolt on the little um, Lexan cover for that. Whether I'll be able to find that part and the Lexan cover for the speed controller, I don't know. But if I don't, you know, there's no big deal. Um, you know, it'd just be nice to have. But the um, uh, mount did work. I just had to cut the little nibs off the bottom of it. And there's two screws that run up in there, so it can't move at all. So the mount will work. It's just the mechanical speed control I got doesn't. So we have a Madcap in the collection to also go side by side with the Saint Dragon um, on the same chassis once I get it finished. Um, right now, it will be a project on the back burner. Um, it'll probably hang out in here as a reminder that I need to get parts ordered and actually do something with it. <laughs> but unfortunately for now, this is where it has to end off. I don't have enough parts on hand to do it, which is kind of silly because I have, what, 16, 20 some totes in here full of random bits and pieces and just didn't have it all. So unfortunately, not a, you know, full, build, restore, anything. Just an introduction to the Madcap. I'm super happy to have it. Thank you so much, Keith, for reaching out and offering this up for sale. Um, I will get it running and, you know, beautified. Again, the food container wing needs to go. And, uh, you know, I got to solder that back on over there. And then, you know, actually be able to get power to it. <laughs> Anyway, guys, um, I'm Tickle Pink to have it. I hope you guys enjoyed taking a first look at it. Um, and just know, you know, things don't always go to plan, but, you know, there's a plan somewhere, and I'll try to find that. <laughs> anyway, guys, everybody out there, you guys be happy, be healthy, be safe, and I will catch you on the next one. See you.